Good day. Today, I am tasked to teach you about the hazards of smoking and vaping. I have entitled this, Be Aware or Beware. Smoking and vaping are hazardous to health. I have four objectives for this lecture. I want you to know the problem the hazards of smoking and that of the secondhand smoke, the facts and myths of e-cigarettes, and the advocacy call. There is a measure to assess the severity of tobacco smoking among the children, and that is we call the Global Youth Tobacco Survey. In 2015, the Philippines ranks second to Malaysia as top smoker among cigarettes. But in that same year, the Filipino youth tops the use of a cigarette at 11.7%. This is quite disturbing because in 2015, e-cigarette is just making its initial steps into the market. So, exposure of kids to secondhand smoke is primarily at home at 38.3%. Unfortunately, kids can still access the cigarettes from the store to the shop to the street vendor or kiosk at 79.4%. And when they will buy, they will never be asked or never be prevented from buying because of their age. Now let's look the GYTS in 2019, which is just recently released last month. There was a drop of smoking prevalence from 12 to 10 percent. Unfortunately, there is the rise of electronic cigarette use among students at 14.1%. Secondhand smoke exposure has decreased and the access and availability of tobacco products has dropped from 37.1%. Now, as you can see, in terms of smoking, and that is the tobacco cigarettes, we have quite a good performance from 12% to 10% in the prevalence. But you will see that for e-cigarette use from 11% in 2015, the rates for use of the Filipinos has risen to 14%. So we have a problem and this lecture is meant to educate all of you kids that we should not engage into this hazardous habit. Please take note that tobacco use is a pediatric disease. 80 to 90 percent of smokers start before 18 years old. Sad to say, we have a young smoker at 17 year old reported at Eastern Visayas. Why do we call it a pediatric disease. Tobacco exposure is not only by the user, and that is what we call the mainstream smoke. The secondhand smoke is the smoke that is inhaled by the bystander, and this picture shows the kid or the baby being carried by the mom. What is the third hand smoke? Unfortunately, even if this mom or the smoker is not smoking anymore, the residue, the chemicals, and even the carcinogens sticks to the hair, sticks to any part of the room where the smoker has done the smoking habit. That's why two-thirds of a child's life, he is exposed to tobacco. In utero, when a pregnant woman is exposed to a smoking household and when the baby goes out, if there is a mother or a father who is a smoker, is a secondhand smoke. 
And what the child sees, he perceives it is right. So that's why that normalization of tobacco use is just fine. So, by the time the child reaches adolescent, there is this period of experimentation. And that experimentation leads to craving, leading to the first inhalation. So that's why it's two-thirds. So by the time that child is an adult, he is engaged and habitually been doing that cigarette smoking. Remember, it starts at home. Even though the figure is decreasing, but with the lockdown during the quarantine, definitely this has risen significantly. What are these two pictures? This one is a pink lung. This is the lung of a non-smoker. Here is the black lung, and that is how a smoker's lung appears. Why is it black? It is because of the product of combustion of that tobacco smoke. The tar is deposited inside that lungs. And you can just imagine the hazard, the health hazard that it creates in the tissues, in the immune system, and all throughout the body. With that, that cigarette smoke has 7,000 chemicals in a single puff, composed of 70 carcinogens. And these carcinogens can be acrylene, cadmium, polycyclic nitrosamines, tobacco-specific nitrosamines, which goes deep into the DNA of a child, creating havoc triggering the cells to be cancerous after so many years. Let's go back to this one. That's why those chemicals and carcinogens that has been engaged and inhaled by the smoker can cause all of these diseases from the mouth down to the feet. We have this smoker's body. Smoking can cause hair loss, premature wrinkling, skin cancer, all sorts of lung ailments, and for Filipinos, tuberculosis, heart disease, discolored fingers because of the vascular effects of that cigarette product, those chemicals, which we call the burger's disease and even the reproductive organs there can be deformed sperms repeated smoking can cause cataracts through the years even there will be hearing loss because of that exposure heat and chemicals it can cause tooth decay and even gum problems it goes to your bone causing early osteoporosis those chemicals can cause increased gastric production, causing stomach ulcers and even stomach cancers, down to the reproductive system of a female causing cervical cancer, to the skin causing psoriasis, and name it, all cancers can be caused by smoking. This is the sad sack. Tobacco contributes to 8 million deaths annually. COVID-19 to date has caused 4.97 million deaths, half of what tobacco is doing ever since. That's why we are calling tobacco as the silent pandemic killing so many people. Obesity is 4 million deaths annually. Alcohol consumption gives 3.3 million deaths annually. Believe me, smoking will slowly but surely kill you. How about secondhand smoke? Secondhand smoke contains the same amount of 7,000 carcinogens and chemicals 
like that of the mainstream smoke. Where are the different windows of exposure of secondhand smoke? During prenatal exposure, the unborn child is being exposed to the passive exposure via the umbilical cord. A baby who just sits or plays beside the mother is exposed to the breast milk and even to the indoor air. And when you reach teenager, because there are peers who may entice you or even though you are not smoking, you are inhaling the same amount of dangerous chemicals and carcinogens from the adolescent peers who are smoking. Let zero in. A mother who smokes has increased chances of miscarriage, increased chances of stillbirth or death upon delivery. Because of the decreased circulation to the uterus via the umbilical cord, a smoking mom is prone to premature birth. And that baby who is chronically exposed to the mommy who is smoking has decreased birth weight, decreased birth length, and sadly, decreased head circumference. Why? Because of the blood flow that has been impeded due to those chemicals inhaled by the mom which goes to the umbilical cord. A low head circumference definitely causes a lot of problems in the developing brain. Sad to say, those chemicals, the nicotine in itself, binds to the folic acid. There's that, that's why there is increased risk of birth defects, and that is the cleft palate or bingot. Now, even though that baby is inside, there is decreased pulmonary growth. When the baby goes out and exposed to secondhand smoke, the first entry point is of course the nose. The nose has a connection to the ears and it can cause acute and chronic middle ear disease. We call it the luga in our Filipino language. Why? Because secondhand smoke exposure decreases the defenses in that air uh, in that part that's why they are prone to halak and frequent upper respiratory tract infections what happens to the airway of a child exposed to secondhand smoke the defense system lining the lungs and the airways is affected there is decreased ciliary function. Those are the hairy appendages of the lining which wards off antigens. The macrophage function, these are actually those cellular components which ingest the dangerous antigen, therefore de diminishing the immune response. So with diminished immune response, you are prone to a lot of respiratory infections. Number one is bronchitis and pneumonia. Sad to say, the effect of secondhand smoke in utero and even as a kid with a parent who's a smoker is at least to have attention deficit hyperactivity disorder by 150%. Look, even childhood cancer is traced to secondhand exposure. If a father smokes, there is a 22% increase of brain tumor in that baby or even in leukemia among that babies and lymphomas. How about the third hand smoke? There is no more smoker. Those lingering chemicals and carcinogens sticks to the curtains, to the walls, sofa, table, and the floor. Look at the baby crawling 
Remember, the baby has this hand to mouth gesture, so he ingests all of those residues. That's why they are also exposed to the same chemicals as that of the mainstream smoke. And even though how much you clean the walls, those linger for months. That's why we call smoking rooms as toxic rooms. E-cigarettes. They were designed in 2003 as a step down from that dangerous cigarettes. But you know that by history, since 2003, it has proliferated in the market. We call it more properly as ENDS or Electronic Nicotine Delivery System or ENDS Electronic Non-Nicotine Delivery System. But this second term is a misnomer because studies have shown that vapes always contain even trace amounts of nicotine. ENDS makes use of a device in that of the e-liquid. One will not work without the other. Sad to say, it has evolved from the first to the fourth generation. But there is a common a ground. All of this will produce the same volatile organic compounds. The nicotine, the cancer-causing chemicals, those ultra-fine particles which is deposited deep down into the lungs and since because there is wire in those gadgets, there are heavy metals such as nickel, tin, and lead which can cause havoc to the brain and to the lungs. Even those flavorings, even they may call it as generally regarded as safe when heated can cause serious lung disease. They have evolved from a disposable first generation to a refillable second generation to the third generation. This is actually the one which has been exploding. There are bat different batteries, different controls to form those different clicks and clouds. But because of those accidents, and many have caught the attention of the hazardous explosions, it has evolved to a fourth generation, which can be concealed in the pocket or even in the pencil case of a child. We call them the pods and the mods. Do not call those cloud as just vapor because the cloud that has been produced by the e-cigarette is actually a suspension of fine particles in the grass. And that's why it is appropriate to call it an aerosol. If you're going to dissect that e-liquid is composed of several substances. Number one is humectant. Either it can be a propylene glycol and a vegetable glycerin. They may be used in some food products, but when heated and inhaled, can produce irritation to the eye, to the airways, causing allergic reaction. Vegetable glycerin, when heated, becomes acrolein and can cause significant upper respiratory tract infection. Sad to say, nicotine in any form, from cigarette and even synthetic nicotine, produces the same effect. At low doses, it can be a neural stimulant or a depressant at high doses. With the advent of all those mental health problems, use of these products will even exaggerate the existing mental health condition of children, particularly anxiety, depression, and behavioral disorders. Nicotine can also act as a tumor promoter, which can lead to neurodegeneration.
e-liquid can come as low as 3 to as high as 36. That is in the year 2017. But in 2019 up to the present, from a free-based nicotine, because it may be harsh for some, they added up benzoic acid and that produces a nicotine salt making the nicotine more compact and more in milligrams. From 20, it can be as high as 90 milligrams. For a young child, wherein this pod contains only minimal amount of e-liquid, they may think that they are ingesting or inhaling a, a small amount, but well, in fact, it is more compact and more dangerous. Look, a pack of cigarettes can give you just 20 milligrams. With the pods, that is the fourth generation, a Joule, that USB-like device, can give you as much as 42 milligrams. A bigger pod, a Stig, can give you 72. An inhaler like the Zorin can give you as high as 96. This is really bothersome for the children, so kids do not engage into this habit. Nicotine is a drug. It is a stimulant to the brain and other system. It is highly addictive. It causes changes in brain chemistry, especially in the young. But if nicotine is unsafe, the question is, why do you think people still choose to use products that have nicotine? It is because of the pleasurable effect that is being given by nicotine when it goes into the dopamine reward pathway. Unfortunately, the brain does not stop to develop at 18, but it stops at the age of 25. Why? Because there is this part of the brain wherein there is a dopamine reward a pathway is the prefrontal cortex. We call it the chief executive officer, which is the one in charge of organization, planning, self-control, emotional regulation, and judgment. Nicotine in adolescents can harm this part of the brain that controls your attention, your learning, your mood, and impulse control. Each time a new memory is created or a new skill is learned, stronger connections or synapses are built between brain cells. The young people's brains build synapses faster than adult brains, and nicotine changes the way these synapses are formed. To simplify, it is like a growing tree with branches, young branches developing. Once it gets used to this chemical, they grow dependent into this substance until adulthood and quitting makes it harder. The use of nicotine in adolescents may also increase the risk for future addiction to other drugs. Why? It is because of the pleasurable experience. So, in summary, the long-term effects of nicotine during adolescence is it can cause diminished cognitive function as adults, it can reduce attention span, it can enhance mood alterations, anxiety or depression. So if your mental health is not balanced, this one will cause exaggeration or even lead to try dangerous substances or sad to say even suicide. Nicotine does not only affect the body, but in other systems, the heart, it beats more fight or flight response the lungs because it causes damage and it causes trouble breathing 
it causes gastric acid secretion so there is more gastric ulcer sad to say the use of cigarettes and even vape because of the nicotine increase in tolerance over time you crave for more because you don't want to have that withdrawal so you use more so what is the other component this is the flavorance this has attractive pictures and attractive flavors to date there are 16,000 illiquid flavors when heated it case it can cause airway inflammation sad to say especially in the philippines many are not pharmaceutical grade so you can just imagine you are inhaling something that might be contaminated with bacteria or other chemicals which are very dangerous to a developing child's body and brain look it may look attractive it may be like candies it might like be your soft drinks or even the fruits there is even a color wheel for you to choose or those flavored puffs which you think will just be flavor that you're ingesting well in fact these are laced with nicotine and remember these devices has wires so the interaction of the e-liquid and the heating can cause nanoparticles to be inhaled deep down into the lungs chromium cadmium nickel lead which can cause inflammation not just in your airways but cardiovascular system lately the american heart association have found evidences of early cardiovascular damages that that is hypertension atherosclerosis in the very young who have been chronically using these vape devices in summary the combination of those humectants that's the liquid base those flavoring nicotine when heated can produce carbonyls and these carbonyls may not be as much as that of the secondhand smoke but there is no such thing as less carcinogens or less chemicals they are still the dangerous chemicals and carcinogens which is not safe for you kids and young adults those can cause cardiovascular diseases early lung cancer what are the potential health risks of e-cigarettes nicotine there are unknown health risks and i think many of you have heard about the e-valley those e-liquids have been laced with vitamin e and even the liquid marijuana and that can cause so much death acute severe lung disease because of those acrolein and other unknown chemicals and a young lung cannot handle those chemicals you produce those clouds it doesn't harm you it even harms the bystander and even the environment so we call that the second hand aerosol and the third hand aerosol this e-cigarette is not a step down it is not a quick device it is mainly a shift device and sometimes four times you have the risk of being a dual user you smoke cigarettes you use vaping which is very dangerous for the former smokers who's into vaping craving will lead to relapse and the use of vaping actually renormalizes tobacco use so the gains of decreasing cigarette smoking may produce a spike again in the next year if we don't regulate these devices those illiquid when ingested by the young can cause poisoning too much use of nicotine especially those of the fourth generation remember it becomes compact can lead to seizures and brain damage therefore kids watch this video
Gaano pa kilala ang kambal na epidemyang banta sa kapakanan at kinabukasan ng kabataan? Ang vaping at paninigarilyo. Ano ba ang totoo? Ang vaping ay ang paghithit ng usok mula sa likido na ang tawag ay e-juice na pinapainit na makabagong electronic device na kung tawagin naman ay Electronic Nicotine Delivery System or ENTS at mas kilala sa tawag na vape or e-cigarette. Iba't ibang anyo ang mga devices na ito. Nagsimula sa disposable na hugis sigarilyong e-cigarette. Sumunod ang refillable at rechargeable vape pens na sinunda naman ng may mas pinalakas at adjustable power na tanks or mods. At ang pinakahuling generation ay pods na lubhang nakakaakit ang disenyo at lubhang pinaliit kaya't madaling ikubli. Ang iba ay napakadaling mapagkamalang USB drive. Aerosol ang usok mula sa e-juice na gawa sa iba't ibang flavors. Propylene glycol or vegetable glycerin at nicotine. Hindi tama na tawagin itong vapor tulad ng nakasanayan na. Aerosol at hindi vapor dahil ito ay suspension sa gas o hangin ng mga likidong droplet at solid particle. Taglay ng aerosol ang hindi ligtas na kemikal mula sa iba't ibang sangkap ng e-juice. Ang flavorings tulad ng candy, popcorn, ice cream at iba pa ay nagiging diacetyl compound na nakakapagdulot ng malalang sakit sa baga. Meron ding ultra-fine particles na umaabot at nakakasira sa pinakaloob ng baga. Mga heavy metals tulad ng nickel, tin, lead at cadmium mula sa mga metal coils ng device. At ang mga kemikal na nagiging sanhi ng cancer, tulad ng nakukuha sa paninigarilyo. Nicotine, na masama sa murang katawan at utak ng kabataan. Volatile organic compounds, na lumalason sa hindi lang sa daanan ng hangin, kundi pati na rin sa buong katawan. Dahil dito, ang vaping ay nagiging dahilan ng mga sakit, gaya ng masamang atake ng hika tulot ng mga nalalanghap na kemikal. Pulmonya dahil sa paghina ng resistensya o panlaban sa impeksyon. Mga allergies sa ilong, bibig, lalamunan at patina sa balat. Pagkalason mula sa pag-inom ng mga bata ng e-juice dahil sa kaaya-ayang amoy. Dagdag pa ang nakakaakit na larawan sa lalagyan ng mga ito. Ang maaring pagsabog ng device sa maling paggamit nito. Ang nikotin naman ay nakapagdudulot ng pagnanasa, lalo na sa kabataan, upang paulit-ulit na gumamit ng vape tulad sa paninigarilyo. Ang vaping sa kalaunan ay daan para sa pagsubok ng paninigarilyo. Hindi palubos na napatunayan na ang vaping ay epektibo sa tulong paghinto sa paninigarilyo. Bagkos ito'y naging palit o dagdag bisyo. Matagal na nating alam ang mga salot sa kalusugan dulot ng paninigarilyo. Tulad din ng vaping, ang paninigarilyo ay nakakababa ng resistensya ng katawan. Ang baga ay humihina kaya't sa pag ersisyo at sa larangan ng palakasan tulad ng pagtakbo, ikaw ay madaling mahahapo. Hindi na naisin ng marami na mapalapit sa isang naninigarilyo dahil sa mabahong amoy ng hininga. At higit pa, ang nikotin ay nag-iiwan ng mantsa sa gilagid at labi upang ang mga ito ay mangitim at mukhang marungis, bukod pa sa paninilaw ng mga ngipin. Marahe lang hindi mo paalam na sa bawat stick ng sigarilyo na mahihit-hit, limang minuto ang nababawas sa iyong buhay. Ang taong naninigarilyo at sino mang nakakalanghap ng usok nito, hindi man manigarilyo ay mas madaling kapita ng tuberculosis. Pulmonya, malalang hika, COPD, sakit sa puso, stroke at cancer sa alimang bahagi ng katawan. Tandaan, maging matalino at praktikal. Gamitin ang pera sa mahahalagang bagay tulad ng masustansyang pagkain at importanteng kagamitan. Huwag sayangin ang pera sa vaping at paninigarilyo. Tandaan din na maging maaruga sa ating kapaligiran. Dagdag pulusyon ang usok ng sigarilyo at vape. Mahalaga sa kalusugan ang malinis na hangin. 
dagdag basura ng mga upos, pods, basyong lalagyan ng vape liquid, pati na ang kanilang baterya ay sumisira sa kapaligiran. Tandaan ang totoo. Mga kabataan, sa smoking and vaping, always say no. Okay, mga bata, yan ang summary ng aking diniskas at sana ay malinaw ang mga hazard na makukuha sa smoking and vaping. The World Health Organization reported last July on the state of the global tobacco epidemic. They have emphasized children and adolescents who use ends can double the risk of smoking cigarettes. They have sounded the alarm. Ends can be gateway to tobacco consumption. Kids, we always have this saying, tell me, I will forget. Show me, I will remember. Involve me, and I will understand. This is actually what your training is. But with the advent of the virtual learning, I give you a platform and I hope you will contribute. This is an advocacy call. I believe for your power to call for action through the social media. Use hashtags, protect us children, Stop smoking, no to vaping, clean air we need, quit not shift, post it in Instagram, if you have Twitter, post it. You may be creative to have this anti-smoking and anti-vaping campaign through the TikTok challenge. I believe in the power of the youth and this lecture is meant to tell you it is easier to build strong children than to repair broken man. Remember the havoc of smoking and vaping? I don't want more children to be damaged by these two hazardous products. Thank you.